Now, there's one more thing we got to do with radicals, which we haven't done. And oftentimes, when you get fractions, by the way, we're dealing with fractions. When you get fractions, you don't want a radical in certain spots. This is especially true when you get to calculus. You're not going to want a radical on the top sometimes, or sometimes you're not going to want a radical on the, on the bottom, denominator. Sometimes not in the numerator, sometimes not in the denominator. And that, the reason is because you're going to deal with these things called limits in calculus where, where you, you, have to, you have to do these, these limits appropriately. You're going to know what I'm talking about when you get to Math 4A or, or your, your calculus class. You know, wait a second, how do I get rid of this? How do I, how do I move a radical around from the top to the bottom, or bottom to the top? What that is called is called rationalization. We're going to learn right now in section 10.5 how to rationalize either the numerator or the denominator. Most of the time, 90% of the time, it's the denominator. We want to get a square root off of the denominator, or the root off the denominator. Rationalization. We're going to learn how to rationalize the, new, the, uh, the fraction to get the, new, the radical off the numerator or denominator. So basically, we're moving a radical off the top or off the bottom of some fraction. Let's start with denominators first. We're going to learn how to rationalize denominators. Now, there's a couple things I need you to know, and this is why I, I kind of went over this so hard, hard with you to make sure you, you knew how to do this stuff. You are going to be doing this stuff within these problems. If you don't know how to do this, you're not going to know how to do this. Okay, it's important that you get this stuff really down, which is why we went over it for the, another 25 minutes right now on three examples, four examples. Make sure you really know how to do this. You see, the, the thing about what made this work so nicely is that you knew what to multiply, right? You know you can multiply a root times itself and get the radicand. You knew you, could, you couldn't multiply uh, three inside of that, that, that root. Namely, there, there's two properties we're going to be using here. The first one is, whenever you get a square root times itself, notice how x could stand for anything, right? Any expression, no matter what. We've dealt with this several times. How much is this going to be? No square root? No square root. No, no, it takes care of itself, right? The square root times itself gives you the radicand every single time. No root, no work. You didn't even show me work. I mean, this is because I'm going to show you this one time. You don't have to show this, but this is why this works. It's because you have a square root times itself. That will be the square root of x squared. You with me? Yes, no? Yes. You know a square root and a square simplify and you get just an x. That's where we're getting that the square root times itself gives you just the radicand. I've showed you that a couple times now. The question I have for you, do you believe me that this is true? Yeah. I hope so, because I've shown it several times. Is that true, do you think? No. We can't say yes or no, because I haven't told you so what n is. Only if n is 2. Only if n is 2. Only if n is 2. Why? Why not? Why, why doesn't it work? I want you to watch, really watch this, because a lot of people get screwed up on rationalization because they think that this is applied for this. Okay, I'll prove to you right now, with just one example, that this is not true unless n is 2. Here's why. If you have a cube root of x times a cube root of x, and this will work for any other, any other type of root, watch what would happen. Sure, you're going to have a cube root times a cube root, which means you can multiply those things together, right? A cube root. But <coughs> what's x times x? Is it x squared or is it x cubed? What do you get? X squared. Does the 2 match up with the 3? Yeah. Does the 2 match the 3? Exactly. Can I simplify that? The power is actually less than the root. So wait a second. This goes, well, this is, that's not equal to x. 
That means that this times this doesn't give you the radicand anymore. That, that doesn't work out. Are, are you following me? Yep. Okay, now I'm going to show you something kind of cool. So you agree that this works if you have a square root, no problem whatsoever. Square roots, no problem. Cube roots, fourth roots, fifth roots, we have a problem here. My question is this. I don't want you to answer out loud. I want you all to think about this. The question I want to ask you is, is there something else? Don't, again, don't answer out loud. I want you to think. Is there something else? You know that this didn't work. Is there something else you could multiply here that would eliminate <coughs> the root? That's the question I'm going to ask you here in just, a, in just a bit. So I knew that this didn't work, but let's pretend I still had that, okay? And I need to multiply by something. I'll give you that it's going to be a cube root. That's the only way you can put those roots together. Is there something I could multiply by in order that I can get something that will simplify? What do you think? X squared. X squared. Well, not X, right? X would give you X squared. What I'm looking for, follow me along if you're not really getting this yet. What I want to happen, I want the power to match the root. Are you with me? That's what happened up here. The power matched the, the, power matched the root. It was square root of X squared. I want this. Can you explain to me why I want that? Sure, that's what I want, right? I want to get rid of the root. That's what I want. The question is, if I have this and I need this, what does this have to be? Sure. Yeah. Why? why? Because you know x times x squared gives you x cubed, right? So for, other, for square roots, it's easy. Square roots are, are nice, you multiply it by itself, and that eliminates the radical. Because you know a square root times itself gives you the radical. Now, if you're with me. If you have any other type of root, you've got to multiply it by whatever you need to make the power match the root. So in our case right here, it's not just the same thing that's not going to work. It's whatever you need to multiply by to match up to a perfect cube, or a perfect fourth, or whatever n through you have. Do you see the difference? Okay. In that case, this, this would be great. That will work for you. Now let's put this into practice, see how we're actually going to rationalize some denominators here. Then we'll move on. We're going to start off nice and simple. Maybe just super some numbers. We'll gradually move on to things that have some variables in them. Okay, rationalize the denominator means I want you to get the square root or whatever root you have <coughs> off the bottom of the fraction. Rationalization means move the radical from where it is out of where it is. Okay, so if it's on the denominator, if I say rationalize the denominator, it means get the radical off the bottom. If I say rationalize the numerator, it would mean get the radical off the top. Are you with me on that? So you're going to be doing both. So you really need to read these problems correctly. If I say rationalize the numerator, and there's two roots, it means get rid of the radical on the top. If I say rationalize the denominator, it means get rid of the radical on the bottom. You're going to have problems where you have roots on both the top and the bottom. Okay? You need to read your problem and know what you're talking about. So 7 over the square root of 2, there's only one root. Chances are we're probably rationalizing that one. But this will all be rationalized, the denominator for this little section here. When I go to numerators, I'll tell you specifically we're rationalizing numerators after that. Now, in order to rationalize a denominator, we knew that we needed to multiply by something. What type of root do we have here? What type of root? Square root. Square root, okay. So we're going to be multiplying by something. You agree? Yes. Okay, so somewhere we're going to be multiplying. That's the only way you can get rid of a root. You can't add anything to get rid of a root. You can only multiply. Now, when we multiply, what I know, actually, what do I know? What do you need to multiply by in order to get rid of the square root of 2? So 2 won't work, right? 3 won't work. 6 won't work. We need only the, the same exact thing. Why do we know that? Well, what you know is that a square root, a square root times itself will get rid of that radical for you. Are you with me on this? Here's the problem. This is a fraction, right? If I multiply the denominator by something and not the numerator, do I have the same value for my fraction? No. So what do I need to multiply the numerator by as well? Two. Clearly, because I'm multiplying by 1 in a very fancy way. So here I know that this right here is going to deal with my problem. True? It's going to get rid of the root on the bottom. 
That right there is a necessity. It means if I multiply this by something, I must multiply this by the same thing, otherwise it changes the value of my fraction. You okay so far? Yep. Let's see what happens. Can you all tell me what we're going to get on the numerator of my fraction? Six. Not root 14. We already talked about that a lot in this class, right? That's why we did this that other section first. So 7 root 2 over. Now let's look at that. What's the square root of 2 times the square root of 2? 2 times That's why that works, right? This, the x isn't just an x. The x is anything that you want it to be. A square root times itself gives you just the radicand, whatever you're multiplying inside of the, that radical. Because you're going to get, if you look at this, this is the square root of 4, right? The square root of 4 is 2. That's why it works. It works every time. You're just going to get a 2. Now, did we get, of the, get rid of the square root on the bottom of the fraction? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did we get rid of the square root altogether? No. No, it's still there. It will always still be there. You can't ever eliminate the square root, ever, unless you have an equation. Okay, remember, remember the fraction, fraction idea? When you had an equation, you could get rid of fractions. When you didn't have an equation, you couldn't get rid of fractions. All you could do is find common denominators, things like that. Same idea here. Right? If you have an equation, I'm going to show you how to get rid of roots. If you don't have an equation, all you can do is move a root around. That's all you can do. Bottom at the top, top at the bottom. That's it. And that's the rationalization idea. Now you know if you're still okay with this. So to rationalize denominators, you're going to multiply both the top and the bottom of the fraction by the root, whatever root you need, to rationalize either like a square root of 2 or if it's on the numerator, uh, whatever root you, you have there. Essentially, we're multiplying by 1. Let's do a few more examples, and I'll show you how to do this with a couple different expressions here. Okay, 2 root 9 over the square root of 16. Now, before you get all crazy with these radicals, before you do that, you might want to try to simplify them because the, the, the less you have to multiply, the less convoluted this problem is going to be. So when you look at this problem, do you see anything you can simplify first? Yeah, let's get rid of the root 9. I mean, my goodness, how much is root 9? Let's get rid of that thing. Don't leave that root 9. That's going to make the problem more confusing. How about the root 16y? Can you simplify that? Yeah, sure. That's, that's what? 4y or 4 root y? Okay, so the square, the square root of y, that power is 1. I can't simplify that. But I certainly could make this 2 times 3, that's 3, over 4 root y. You follow me on that? Okay, good. We, we've done a lot of simplification so far in this class. We have 6 over 4 root y. Hey, anything else that you can do before you go any further? A simplified subtraction. It's a fraction, right? It's a fraction. You could simplify that fraction. In fact, you could have done that here. 2 and the 4. Could have done that. Okay, let's do one more step. Instead of 6 fourths, this is multiplication, I could do 3 over 2 root y. So far, so good? Okay, now. Now you're supposed to rationalize the denominator. Could you have done it here? Sure. It's going to be more work and more simplification for you at the end of your problem. Okay? But if you don't do this, you can still get the right answer. 